This one here was painted by Rembrandt, the famous Dutch painter in the 17th century. And this one here was designed by an AI. The AI studied the works of Rembrandt, came up with an original piece predicting what Rembrandt would be creating today if he was still alive. Then painted by a 3D printer with certain layers of oil paint. Today, science and technology are developing rapidly. Just two years ago, headlines were made around the world when the AI program AlphaGo beat the world top player in the game Go. It was shocking for many, not only because the speed of AI development was much faster than they expected, but also because the AI program devised its own original tactic moves, which humans have never come up with throughout the long history of the game. What is perhaps more incredible, however, is just one year later, a new AI program was released that can beat the older Elder AlphaGo program in every game. This new program was reported to learn only by self-play, doing away with learning from the moves of past human matches. Of course, as with AI, 3D printers are becoming more capable every day. Today, they can make any shape from all different kinds of materials, ceramics, metal, glass, food, and even cell. They can make things much more intricately and much faster than any skilled craftsman, all while making fewer mistakes and without getting tired. Like it or not, science and technology are surpassing the ability of humans, and such powerful technology is opening up to everyone. Are we ready for such powerful technologies? There are two news items about 3D printers in 2016 that struck me. One reported the counterfeit euro coins made by 3D printers were in circulation. The other reported the 3D printed reconstruction of ancient lion statue that was previously destroyed by ISIS, the so-called Islamic, Islamic State. These stories show us that whether technology is used for good or bad critically depends on the moral of the users and not on technology itself. When faced with the latest technology in the laboratory, I myself was not so sure <laughs> if I was ready to use them. Here in OIST, we now have next generation sequencers that can decode human genomes within just a few days. And two armed robots that can help us set up experiments. We know that the genetic information can be used to cure diseases but it can be also abused by organizations like insurance companies. I found it difficult to have confidence in myself if I was confined to a laboratory. At that time, I came across a traditional style of Okinawan pottery called the Yachimun. When I first saw pieces of Yachimun pottery, I was so moved and inspired that I knew I wanted to be a Yachimun Potter apprentice. I found a studio called Kitagama that practices authentic Okinawan traditional pot making with 13 chambered climbing kilns. There, 
I learned the techniques of photo making, but my most important lesson was understanding potters' lifestyles and their ways of thinking. In order to manage the traditional kilns, they live communally with more than 20 other people. They cook together, eat together, and work together. They share their joys and sorrows and develop a strong sense of cooperation. I saw evidence of such strong ties, not only in the studio, but also in the local community. Almost all materials for pot making come from the local suppliers. The rice husk, sugarcane pomace, and manganese nodule needed for the glaze were provided by local rice shops, sugar factories, and the landlords. Wastewood in the local communities was provided for use as a firewood. Their pot making cannot be done without the support of local community. With this in mind, potters stick strictly to, make, to making pots for functional daily use and not for art. They hope to improve people's daily lives with their products, giving back to the local community. On the days when pots are fired, many people in the community gathered around the kilns and pray for a successful firing. And during the firing, potters feel gratitude toward the people in the local community, as well as for nature, and this foster a sense of respect. After three days and nights of firing and four days of cooling, new pots are born. In looking at these beautiful pots, we can appreciate the long continuous history of these people's work and why it should be preserved. Before I went to Kitagama, I was focused solely on results and efficiency. In research, one should try to get the results as soon as possible in order to beat the competition. If 3D printers can produce the same result much more efficiently, then they are the best solution for a laboratory. However, in traditional crafts, I learned in, I learned that the gaps left open by the omission of technologies, there are people's lives and livelihoods. And I learned that such activities are important to foster moral compass and correct mindset needed for proper use of powerful technology. What I believe as the best answer before was just limited answer in my own narrow field. We can learn a lot from the traditional crafts. Ironically, however, traditional crafts are vanishing rapidly all over Japan due to the never-ending march of technologies. Before these crafts disappear, something must be done in the Japanese education system, the time put aside for traditional crafts is undervalued and continues to decrease. However, educating children about traditional crafts is educating them about how people lived for much of human history before they disappear. I, together with the people in the Association of Art Education, started to correct and record what we can learn from the traditional crafts. Before they disappear, we should at least pass on their lessons. So far, we have collected 10 lessons, and one of them is, of course, 
the need to deepen the community ties, as I have talked about. Using these lessons and the accompanying stories, we try to make a textbook to help students develop the moral set necessary for everyone who will live in our future of powerful science and technology. But even better than that, my real hope is that we can learn directly from the sites of traditional crafts like Kitagama far into the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>